Okay, so now we are looking at gas reduction, aka Rho reduction. Okay, so look at the page 16. Okay, gas reduction. So it says gas reduction, aka Rho reduction. So it says you should remember how to gas reduce. To solve the system of linear equations from MEM 1021S, but it's so important in actually doing computation of this course that we will review it here. We outline the general procedure below and apply it to an example as a concrete illustration. Given the system AX equals B, we perform the following steps to obtain the solution X, when it exists, when there is a solution. Create an augmented matrix AB. For me, I don't like bothering to create the augmented matrix. I just like writing down, this, leaving the system written down in this form. The reason Oh, sorry, in this form. The reason for that, the reason I like leaving it like that is because often when you write down an augmented matrix, you forget what the system you're actually solving was. So I like just leaving it like that, and you'll see maybe what I mean a bit uh, when you do a concrete example. Okay, the subsequent steps can be divided into two parts. First, we work from top to bottom and left to right, steps two to four, and then from bottom to top and right to left, steps five to seven. So it says, start off by moving the leftmost non-zero entry in the matrix to the top row, by interchanging rows if necessary. Scale the top row so that the leftmost non-zero entry is one. This entry is our first pivot element. Make all the entries underneath the pivot equal to zero by subtracting a suitable multiple of the pivot row from each row beneath it. Repeat from step two, now ignoring the top row. And then you, you know, you're gonna do that again and again. You're gonna repeat uh, two, and two and three again and again Ignoring the top row, ignoring the top two rows, and ignoring the top three rows, okay? While performing this first part of the gas reduction, we may generate a row of zeros in the left of the augmented matrix. I don't like augmented matrix, so for me it would be, if you're doing it my way, it would be, you would get a row of zeros in this matrix. Let me call it A dash now. Ooh, A dash X equals B dash. So A, A dash and B dash have changed from A and B by these... Uh, reduction operations. While performing this first part of the row reduction, we may generate a row of zeros at the left of the augmented matrix. Okay, I, so this would be, for me, it would be a row of zeros in the matrix A. Okay, in the, sorry, in the matrix A dash now. Ooh, sorry. If, a, if alpha equals zero, so if the thing in the, that means if the thing in the B, in the B dash equals that's corresponding to that row of zeros is zero, then the entire row of zeros should be left at the bottom of the augmented matrix. Okay. It has no bearing on the solution. Hmm. I mean, it sort of symbolizes that there's a free variable. I'm, I'm, it has no bearing on the solution. I mean, the fact that it's there takes away the, how many other pivot things there can be and makes the free variables. So for me, it's important that you do this, that you do leave it at the bottom of the matrix. You don't take it away. You don't just throw away your rows of zeros. You leave the system in this form with the matrix A always the same A dash always the same size as the original matrix A and the B B dash vector always the same size as the original matrix B. You change the size, you often forget what you're originally solving and you give a solution that's not actually the right size. Okay. If alpha equals zero, then the system's inconsistent. Uh, oh. Now if alpha is not equal to zero, then the system's inconsistent. Okay, why? Because then it's saying that if you look at the matrix multiplication that's happening here, if you look at the matrix multiplication, you imagine the matrix multiplication that's happening here, you'd have like a row of zeros multiplied by this vector gives you something that's not zero. So you'd have zero equals something not zero. That's, that's inconsistent. So if you get that, then you stop the calculation because you found there are no solutions, so you just say that. Okay. Now suppose we carry on this procedure and we never get that row of zeros. Or we get rows of zeros, we never get an inconsistent bit. We never get a row of zeros in the matrix on the left and not with a non-zero thing in the vector on the right. Then we do this, we'll follow the procedure, we'll transform the augmented matrix into row echelon form. Each pivot is to the left of the pivots beneath it. Okay, so it has like a, a step like, the matrix A dash will have a step like form where these things are all zero, zero, zero is underneath here, and then there's pivots, one, one, all the to all ones like that, and they have a step like form like that. Always each pivot being to the left of the pivots beneath it. The things beneath each pivot then are always going to be all zeros. Okay. 
the leftmost non-zero entry in the bottom row becomes our first pivot element. So you might have some rows of zeros at the bottom. You ignore those. You look for the first row from the bottom that has a non-zero entry, and that becomes our, our first pivot. We make all the entries above this pivot equal to zero by subtracting a suitable multiple of the pivot row from each row above it. Okay, so you use that bottom row to, to make everything above its pivot zero. And then you to go to the next row up and do the same thing. So you repeat these steps again and again. Okay, when you've done this, the matrix is now in reduced row echelon form. Each pivot is the left of the pivots beneath it, beneath it, and each pivot is the only non-zero entry in this column. So, we, okay. And when you, then once you've got to this form, you have to read off the answer. Each column corresponds to an unknown variable. Columns without pivots are free variables, and you introduce an additional variable for each of these columns to indicate that the corresponding unknowns can take any value. Okay, that's a bit unclear. I think probably it's a bit unclear if you don't know Gauss reduction yet, or perhaps. Let's now do an example with this system. And again, and I'm going to do this in the way I like it, not writing down an augmented matrix, just leaving the system, keeping the system as it is all the time, because to me that's clearer. Okay. So we have, want to solve this system. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's a huge system. 1, 1, 3, 4, 3, 6, 1, 1, 3, 2, 1, 4, 1, 1, 5, times the vector x equals 4, 1, 2. Okay. So they suggested that we start off well, they suggested making a meta matrix. I'm not going to do that. But so we just have the system as it is. Then they say they the operations they suggest doing are subtracting row one from row two, three times row one from row three. And you can indicate it like that. Okay. So here I'm going to do this. So we can do. So row. So row two. Should become row 2 minus row 1, and row 3 should become row 3 minus 3 times row 1. Okay, so let's do that. So the top row stays the same, 1, 4, 1, 2, 1, multiplied by the vector x equals, top row stays the same, 4. Row 2 becomes row 2 minus row 1, so we get 0, 3 minus 4 is minus 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, 1 minus 2 is minus 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, 1 minus 4 is minus 3. Row 3 becomes row 3 minus 3 times row 1. So 3 minus 3 is 0. 6 minus 12 is minus 6. 3 minus 3 is 0. 4 minus 6 is minus 2. 5 minus 3 is 2. And here on the right-hand side, we have 2 minus 12, which is minus 10. Okay? So... I can actually put an if and only if thing here, right? This new reduced, row reduced equation gives you, has exactly the same solutions as the original equation, okay? So those two things are logically equivalent. Now I just checked that we got, we had the right, got the same numbers dated. Zero minus one, zero minus one, zero minus three. Zero minus six, zero minus two, two minus 10, yes, okay. Then the operation they suggest doing next is multiply the second row by negative 1 so that the first non-zero entry in that row is 1. So you take row 2 and you change it to minus row 2. Okay. So if you do that, you'll get top row the same, second row times every entry by negative 1, third row the same. Leave it as it is, okay? So we look like the same numbers, yes. And this thing, this statement, this thing is true, exactly the same circumstances as, ooh. Sorry. This new equation has exactly the same solutions as the, the previous one, right? Each step does not change the solutions, as long as you do the same thing to the right and the left of the equation. Okay. Uh, then next. Okay. Then they suggest adding six copies of row two to row three. So 
take row 3, so take row 3 and add 6 times row 2 to it. Okay. Okay, so what do we get? Let's look at the 1, 4, 1, 2, 1 in the top row. It's vector x equals 4, 3, minus 10. Oh, sorry, I'm not going to do that. Row 2 is staying the same as well, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 3. Now row 3, add 6 to it, so you get 0, 6, six times, minus 6 plus 6. That's 0 here, minus 2 plus 6, it's 4. That's still, that stays 2. Minus 10 plus 6 times 3, so minus 10 plus 18, so... That should be 8. And that's indeed what they have as well, okay? Now they suggest taking row 3 and dividing it by 4, okay? So I write like this, row 3 divided by 4, okay? Top row stays the same. Second row stays the same. Last row changes to 0, 0. Hmm. Yeah. 0, 0. So, personally, I don't like getting fractions in my reduction until absolutely necessary at the end. So, personally, what I actually would do here is I would rather... No, whatever. It's, it's fine. It's fine to do this. Divided by... I mean, I don't mind it so much. Okay. 1 half 8 divided by 4 is 2. Okay. Now we want to get the second row to become, we want the things above the pivots. We want things above uh, this pivot to be 0. So when you change row 2, it must become row 2 minus row 3. And meanwhile, row 1 should become row 1 minus 2 times row 3. Okay, so if we do that, what we're going to get? Top row will become 1, 4, 1, then 0, 1. No, 0, 0, right? Because a half times 2 is 1. x equals, and we have 4 minus 2 times 2, so 4 minus 4, so 0. And we have, here we have 0, 1, 0, and then 0, minus a half. Uh, 3 minus 2 is 1, and then the last row is staying the same. Okay. Which is, is that what they have? Yes, it's what they have there. Okay. Next step, they say, try doing, taking row 1 and subtracting 4 times row 2 from it. You do that, you get 1, 0, 1, 0. Now, minus a half times minus 4 is 2, so you get 2 there. 0, 1, 0, 0, minus a half. 0, 0, 0, 1, a half times the vector x equals, we want 0 minus, uh, 4 times row 2, so we got minus 4, 0 minus 4, 1, 2. Okay, they got the same thing that they have. Okay. Okay, now we need to, now this is reduced, this is reduced row echelon form because it's got these pivots, and below every pivot, everything above and below each pivot is 0. Okay, and each pivot is to the right of the pivot. In the, in the row above, okay? So now we can read off the solutions. It says, the third and fifth columns don't contain a pivot. These variables are free, i.e. we let x3... Okay, so why is the third column x3? Because, look, this vector x, right? It's actually... Oh, sorry. It's got to have five rows because this matrix has five columns, right? So it's x1, x2, x3, x4 x5. Okay, so if you multiply this matrix by that vector, you can see it's the, it's the third column, oh, it's the third column that multiplies by the x3, right? Remember that matrix multiplication expresses the columns of the matrix, makes a linear combination out of the columns of the matrix with the, vec the, the elements of the vector being the coefficients for each column, right? So we have x1 times the first column, x2 times the second column, plus x3 times the third column, plus x4 times the fourth column, plus x5 times the fifth column. That's what the definition of matrix multiplication. So this third column, that's the thing that corresponds to x3. 
first column corresponds to x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. So, if we have, since we have no pivot, I mean, we have pivot here, we have a pivot here, we have a pivot here, right? The leading entries in each, in each row. Since there's no pivots in column three, that means that that variable is free. So we could set it equal to some alpha. Alpha is any real number. Since there's no pivot in column five, x5 is also free, so we set it equal to some beta. So we start off by writing the solution down like this. By writing, by writing something like this. We have, our solution is going to be, oh, we know our solution is going to be um, a vector, a five vector, right? It's going to be some constant five vector plus now alpha times something plus beta times something. The, the, the alpha corresponds to the x3, so you have a 1 times alpha, so the alpha, so the x3 equals alpha. And it doesn't have any, x3 has no betas in it, right? It's just the alpha. And it doesn't have any constant. X3 is just the alpha, so this third row must just read alpha. 0 plus alpha times 1 plus beta times 0, that's just alpha. Similar thing for the fifth row. It must just read beta. 0 plus 0 times alpha plus 1 times beta, that's beta, right? So that gives you all those entries. Now we look at each row of the matrix to get the other remaining entries. So the first row we have is, we have, in our one we have, we have 1, 0, 1, 0, 2 on the left-hand side and minus 4 on the right-hand side. So what that really is saying, sorry about that, So what that first row is saying, if you think about matrix multiplication, is it's saying x1 plus x3 plus 2x5 equals minus 4, right? Yes, that's exactly what they say. x1 plus x3 plus 2x5 equals minus 4. So now the x3 and the x5, those are the free variables. So x3 is the alpha, x5 is the beta. So if you solve this thing for x1, you get the x1 is minus alpha, minus 2 beta, minus 4. So fill that in on this first row. Minus 4, minus alpha, minus 2 beta. Now we're going to do the same for the other two rows. So the second row, here, that says x2 minus a half x5 equals 1. Okay? So in other words, x2 equals a half x5, but x5 is the beta, so x2 equals a half beta. So that means we should have a 0 there, a 0 there. Oh, no, sorry, I, I, I made a mistake here. x2, x2 minus half x5 equals 1, so x2 equals 1 plus a half x5, right? So we should have a 1 here. 1 there, a 0 there, and a half there, because x5 is the beta, right? Now the third row says, this third row says it says x4 times, 1 times x4 plus a half times x5 equals 2. So that's saying that x4 equals 2 minus a half times x5. So we're going to need a 2 over here, a 0 over there, and a minus half over there. Is that, is that what they got? Minus 4, 1, 0, 2, 0. Minus 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. Mi minus 4. Where did that come from? They've made a mistake because they put a... No? This here, this is, this is not minus that meant to, That's meant to be minus 4, right? It's that minus 4. This is a typo. That's minus 4. Okay? Minus 4. Oh, I see. They are scaling it by a factor of 2. Sorry. This is minus 2 because it's that minus 2 beta. Okay? So, they, times, they take this vector, minus 2, half, 0, minus a half, 1, and they want to get rid of the fractions because... It's hassle to write to have the fractions written down. It makes it look less, less simple. Well, you can times it by 2, right? Because this beta could be any real number. 
So you can you can absorb the, the, uh, the you can absorb the half into it basically. So you have minus two times two is minus four. A half times two is one, and this is zero. Then a minus half times two is minus one, and then one is two. So these two things are the same, right? They have the same solutions. They give the same solution, and that is how you solve. That is how you solve um, a matrix equation, or a system, also known as a system of linear equations with Gauss reduction. Okay. So, ah, what, the only other thing to say is that once you've solved it, you really should check that it really is a solution. Okay, um, because it is so easy to make mistakes in, in row reduction. I mean, like, like you, you make a mistake more often than not, to be honest. I mean, we have probably haven't made a mistake here because I've done it and the book has done it, and we've agreed. But just for to show you how, let's, let's check. How do you check? Well, if this, thing, <coughs> if this thing is the solution, right, then of course, uh, what was that matrix called originally? What did we call the matrix we were looking, working with originally? Oh, we didn't get a name. Let's call that matrix we were working with originally A. Okay, call that matrix A. Now, if, that, if this X we have here is a solution, then of course, a times x, which is a must, a times x must equal whatever was on the right hand side. Let's call it b. Okay. A times x, that's a times this, this whole thing, right? Now, matrix multiplication, you could now what you could do, you could just do this multiplication. Now, you could write this vector on the right as like as minus four top entry is minus four minus alpha minus four beta next entry is one zero beta next entry is 0, alpha, 0, next entry will be 2, 0, minus beta, final line, 0, 0, 2, beta, right? Oh, sorry. I'm feeling this, the addition to the plus signs. Sorry. <sighs> Made a mess of that. I'm really sorry. This vector, it's the same as minus 4, minus alpha, plus, oh, minus 4, beta in the top row, then... 1 plus beta in the next row, then alpha in the next row, and then 2 minus beta in the th fourth row, and then 2 times beta in the third row. You could just now multiply that vector by A, and it would hope it would, if it was really was the solution, if our, cost, if our row reduction was correct, we would get this vector B, which is 4, 1, 2, okay? You could do that. But what's easier to do is to remember that matrix multiplication is linear, right? So if you have this, what we have here is a linear combination of three vectors, right? With coefficients one, alpha, and beta. So that actually becomes a times the first vector, minus four, one, zero, two, zero, plus alpha times a times the second vector, minus one, zero, one, zero, zero, plus beta times a times the third vector, 4, minus 4, 1, 0, minus 1, 2, right? And these multiplications are a bit quicker to do than, it's, to be honest, it's quicker to do these three multiplications separately than to do, at least for me, than it is to do that one multiplication. So let's just do these multiplications. So what was the matrix A that we had? It was, the matrix A was 1, 1, 3, 4, 3, 6. One one three four three six. One one three four three six. One one three two one four. One one three two one four. And then one one five four one two. One one five. Oh, that was the A. That was matrix A. The B was four one two. Okay. So we want to do a times this first vector minus four one zero two zero. So first row, the first row of that. So let's call this vector. Let's call it u. Let's call this vector v. Let's call this vector w. Okay. So a times u. What is it? Um, you have. I'm going to have three rows. Okay, because a has three rows. The first row is going to be. Minus four, plus four, plus four. So it's four. The second row is going to be minus four, plus four, 
plus 2. Right? It's going to be, what? It's going to be, oh, I'm sorry, I'm doing something very silly here. No, am I? No, I'm not. I, but I am simplifying something. Let's just work this out. So this u is uh, minus 4, 1, 0, 2. So second row is going to be minus 4 plus 3 plus 2. So minus 4 plus 5, which is 1. Okay? The next, the next uh, row, we're going to have minus 12. So we have 3 times minus 4 is minus 12. Minus 12 plus 6, that's 6, plus, oh, that's minus 6, sorry. Minus 6 plus 4 times 2, minus 6 plus 8, that's 2, 4, 1, 2. So for that first one, we get 4, 1, 2. Now, that is to be expected. Why? Because this thing, it's this vector u, this vector u, plus alpha times this vector v, plus beta times this vector w. And what's actually happening, if you remember earlier, we found that a solution to an inhomogeneous system is actually a solution to the, any, it's actually any solution to the inhomogeneous system plus an inhomo, the inhomogeneous, the ho solution to the corresponding homogeneous solution. So in other words, what I'm expecting is that AU, that U is a solution to the, to the inhomogeneous system, so AU does equal 412, then I'm expecting to get a v equal to zero and a w equal to zero because then we're going to have alpha when we do this here you get this being zero and this being zero and this being four one two right <coughs> okay so let's do let's calculate a times v hopefully we'll get zero so we have one three one 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 times that by the vector Minus one zero one. What do we get? We get um, minus one plus one. Yes, zero. Next one, next next line. Minus one plus one. Zero. Next line. Minus three plus three. Zero. Cool. Then finally, a times this w, which is minus four, which is uh, minus four one zero minus one two you're going to get you're going to get minus 4 plus 4 which is 0 and then minus 2 plus 2 which is 0 next row you'll get minus 4 minus 4 plus 3 minus 1 plus 2, which is 0. Next row you'll get minus 12 plus 6, minus 12 plus 6, minus 4 plus 10. What? Minus 12 plus 6, minus 4 plus 10. So that's what that's. Minus 16 plus 16, yes, that's 0. Okay. So... I need a bit more space to write now. So we've worked out that AU equals 4 minus 2, AV equals 0, AW equals 0, okay? So, um, oh, sorry. Let me just clear this. Okay, so we've worked out that if we call this u, sorry, <sighs> sorry about that. Okay, if we call this u, this v, and this w, right, we've worked out just now that au, where a is the original matrix, equals b, where b is the thing on the right-hand side of that equation, which was 4, 1, 2, that a v equals 0, and that a w equals 0. And so therefore, a of x, which is a 
times u plus alpha v plus beta w equals b plus 0 plus 0 equals b. OK? So we check that this thing we found really is indeed a solution to the original matrix equation.